The use of maple tubing can make the gathering of sap much less work. The tubing that runs from tree to tree is called 5 16th tubing. The drop line is the same size but connects the tap on the tree to the line that collects from a series of trees. You usually want to limit the number of taps on a 5 16th line to five or six before they empty into a holding tank or a larger line. The tubing is suspended from tree to tree between two and five feet above the ground. The tubing is held there by keeping it tight. Line that is allowed to dip below the snow will often freeze and stay frozen during the day and not allow sap coming from the tree to pass by. Tubing must be tight and always run downhill. The 5 16 line is connected to the larger, 3 quarter or 1 inch lines and directed to the sugar house or to a collection tank. Many kinds of fittings are made to accomplish the needs of getting sap from tree to the sugar house. The end tree on the 5 16 line ends by forming a loop around the tree along with the tap. Even the drop lines need to be arranged so that they only go downhill. There should be no loops or traps where the sap will not freely flow on. Tubing can be set up in different formats. The first example in this slide is like a tree with the main lines following the lower ravines in the woods and the smaller tubing coming off on both sides. This can work well especially in a woods with distinct valleys. When checking main lines however the maple producer is constantly ducking or stepping over lines which can make for slow going and eliminates the use of a four-wheeler or snowmobile. Setting main lines on a contour at even intervals of between 80 and 150 feet and then just running 5 16 lines uphill from those main lines makes for a system that is convenient to walk or ride out next to for maintenance or pleasure. The tubing should be rinsed at the end of the season to eliminate sap from the system. This is best done by pumping clean water and compressed air into the bottom of the line and pulling taps along the line until water blasts out and then seal them onto the tap holder. Many kinds of wildlife can cause damage to tubing, but the main problem is the squirrel. They can severely damage and destroy maple tubing systems where the tubing is left up year round. Sap should be filtered before entering the boiling pan. This is easily done with a bag or sap type filter. If you pump the sap, inline filters are very convenient. Larger operations may need larger filter systems. Moths and crane flies can be common additions to sap, especially where buckets or open sap tanks are used. How many moths per gallon of syrup do you want? Keep them out of the boiling pan by filtering. Sap holding and gathering tanks should be washed and sanitized between runs, especially when the sap has stopped running because of a warm period with no temperatures below freezing to restart the sap. Lack of cleaning will result in darker grades of syrup. Converting sap into syrup is the processing, evaporating, or boiling phase of sugar making. Usually a tap will yield between 7 and 25 gallons of sap in a season depending on the size of tree, quality of the tap, soil conditions, and other factors. You, as a maple producer, need to be prepared to store between 1 and 2 gallons of sap per tap so that during a good run you don't end up losing good sap onto the ground because the boiler can't keep up. On average you should expect between one pint and one half gallon of syrup for each tap. Three simple rules for making quality syrup. First, process the sap as soon as possible. Second, keep stored sap as cool as possible. Especially keep sap tanks from the, being in the sun. Third, don't let anything into the sap that you don't want concentrate into syrup. Examples would be don't mix clean fresh sap with old spoiled sap. Be sure to completely rinse soaps or sanitizers from equipment before they come into contact with sap. Don't overuse defoamers. Avoid having sap contact smoke, dirt, rain, insects, or most anything else that you don't want concentrated into your syrup. Many kinds of containers and stoves are used to process maple sap into syrup using a number of different heat sources. The main way that a very small producer makes syrup is by the batch method. Sap is gradually added or in small batches to a pan that boils sap away. 
Adding the sap continues until the sap is gone or the pan fills to a point that it makes sense to finish off a batch of syrup and begin the process all over again. Commercially made syrup pans are usually constructed to accommodate a continuous flow system where sap is continuously added at one area of the pan and gradually works its way through the various chambers of the pan to a finishing area where syrup is continually taken off in small amounts. When using either the batch method or a continuous flow system, the foaming of the boiling sap can be a problem. The foam can be controlled by using a defoamer. Very small amounts of defoamer can be added to the boiling sap. Defoamer can be purchased from a maple equipment dealer. You can also use one of several common defoamers, including vegetable oil, butter, margarine, or other fat. Use as little as possible to do the job. Some defoamers can add off flavors to the finished syrup, resulting in a rancid flavor. This is a simple schematic of how the typical wood-fired arch and pan are set up. Note how the heat from the fire is squeezed up close to the pan prior to entering the smokestack. This improves the efficiency of the evaporator system. Here is a picture of how a wood-fired evaporator looks. Note this picture does not show a hood over the pans. A hood can help direct the steam out of the sugar house as well as reduce smoky odors coming in contact with the syrup. A hood also allows a preheater to be used to warm sap prior to entering the pan. This schematic of a preheater shows how steam from the evaporator pan is used to heat cool sap prior to adding it to the boiling pan. Most preheaters are made of pipe in which the cool sap runs and a tray underneath to catch the condensation from the pipes. A preheater can add to the energy efficiency of the boiling operation. The oil or gas fired evaporator is similar in setup to the wood fired arch. This is a picture of a gas fired arch. Steam enhanced pans provide more efficiency than preheaters and are placed over the boiling pan to capture and reuse the energy of the steam. These often stand taller than a regular pan and arch. For even greater energy efficiency, a reverse osmosis or RO machine can be purchased. This system puts pressure on the sap and forces some of the water through a special membrane. An RO can reduce the amount of water that needs to be boiled from the sap by 50 to 75 percent. The process has very low energy cost, however the RO machines are expensive and do need special care. What heat source would you use to make maple syrup? There is a wide variety in both cost of various energy sources and the efficiency of the equipment used to convert energy to evaporation. Based on energy costs in the spring of 2006, here are the calculated average cost of energy per gallon of syrup produced on equipment with a normal energy efficiency rating for the given fuel. Note, however, that the efficiency of a piece of equipment can vary greatly from the average. A propane turkey roaster, for instance, would have a much lower efficiency rating than a well-designed propane maple arch and pan. Using a turkey roaster and purchasing the propane in small barbecue type canisters for about three times the bulk propane price can make a gallon of syrup run as much as $50 each in propane costs. 